Hello and welcome back to another learning series with Mr. Knight. Today's topic is on the root hair cell. Before I get into the details of this lesson, I want to draw your attention to two other topics. These are photosynthesis and transpiration. The reason for this is because these processes depend on the function of the root hair cells. Roots are very important to plants. Roots are important because they provide anchorage for plants. They also absorb water and mineral salts. If we should zoom into a root, what you'll find is some smaller structures called root hairs. If we should zoom into one of these root hair, what we will find are some very unique cells called root hair cells. This is representing a root hair cell. And just like any other cells within the plant, a root hair cell contains a nucleus, there is a cytoplasm, there is a large vacuole, which I will be discussing later. There is a cell wall. There is a cell membrane and many mitochondria, which I'll also be discussing later. Now, the main function of a root hair cell is to absorb water and mineral salts. A point to note that even though they are absorbed in the same direction from the outside to the inside, they are absorbed differently. And so let us look at the absorption of water first. Now, water is absorbed by osmosis, which is a passive transport. What this means is that this movement of water does not require any form of energy because the water molecules are moving from a higher concentration to a lower concentration. To understand what this means, these blue particles represent water molecules. And if you notice, there are much more of them on the outside of the root hair cell compared to what are on the inside. Hence, the particles will move from the outside to the inside almost effortlessly to balance out the concentration. The water molecules will rush right in to balance off that concentration. Now, let us take a look at the movement of mineral salts. For minerals to move, they will move by active transport. What this means is that the minerals, they will be moving against a concentration gradient. What this means is that the minerals will move from an area where they are less in terms of numbers or concentration to an area where they are more in concentration. So if you should observe these purple circular structures, which aligned with blue, they represent mineral salt. And so if you notice, they are less on the outside and more on the inside. Hence, these particles will move against the concentration gradient and rush from outside to the inside. A point to note that because they're going against the concentration gradient, there's some energy requirement. So let's zoom into this to see how this works. Now, for active transport to take place, there are some special proteins called transport proteins. These proteins will require energy to carry out their action because movement is involved. And so if you notice the dark blue lines, they represent the cell wall and, and cell membrane of the root ear cell. Because the particles of the minerals are more on the inside than comparing to the outside, the concentration gradient 
under normal circumstances will be from the inside of a root tear cell to the outside. However, the minerals will move in the opposite direction, which is termed as moving against the concentration gradient. So the minerals will move from the outside towards the inside and aided by these proteins that are called transport proteins. So now let's look now further at what is happening to these particles as they move inside of the root tear cells. So the water molecules and the minerals, they rush in from the root tear cells across the epidermal cells and then into the xylem vessel. Point to note that substances only move upwards in the xylem vessel. In other words, they only move in one direction. Now, let's look further and talk about some adaptations of the root hair cells. One, the walls, they are very thin for easy diffusion. They have large surface area for efficient absorption. They have large vacuoles to store large quantities of water. There are many mitochondria to provide energy for active transport, as I mentioned, to those transport protein. Last, they contain transport proteins to take in specific mineral ions. And now we are at the end of the lesson, and I'm looking forward to see you in other lessons. Stay safe until we meet again.